So now that it's been a couple of days and I've had some actual time to level up my Iori, get the Ascension items for this review and, you know, get a couple of extra copies so he's not just NP1, although... Even at NP1, this guy can do some really good damage, but let's be honest, the real strength of offensive free-to-play units is that they are free NP5s, and so they can do more damage than a lot of the gotcha servants that you might not be able to pull. You can rely on these free options that are generally pretty strong, and Iori is one of those very strong options. I even think he's probably up there in the top five, maybe even cracking top three best free-to-play servants. I would have to marinate on that just a little bit more because there are a few things that I don't like about Iori, but mostly everything is going to be positive. Like, I like 95% of his kit. There's just a couple little things here and there that I wish they would tweak just a little bit. And there is one specific buff that I guess I'll just spoil right here that he doesn't have. I wish he had the double hits that Masashi has. I know that's her special thing, but Iori literally uses the same style as Masashi, and I thought we were finally going to get a free-to-play guy or just anybody else really in general that has the double hit mechanic besides the Masashis, obviously, and we didn't really get that. So that was a little bit disappointing, but that's more of me just being a lore head and being very not happy that they didn't do the lore thing for Iori. It probably would have made him a lot better, maybe a little too good if they gave him that, but I don't know. I still wanted to see it, but regardless... This is going to be my review for the free-to-play Yori Servant that we got from the Samurai Remnant event. If you enjoy daily FGO content, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff as it helps me out more than you know. And if you want to see me play FGO live, I do that every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday over on my Twitch, which is linked in the description down below. So if you want to see me get booty blasted by whatever raid is coming next week or whatever challenge quest we're going to get because we really don't know what we're going to get. They didn't announce anything. Whatever it is, I'm probably going to get blasted by that, and you can be there to see me get blasted live. But anyway, let's start getting into this review, starting off with Iori's hits, which are all rather solid. He's got a decent enough quick card, but I don't think anybody's bringing this guy to be an assassin and gen a bunch of stars. That's what the first skill is for. The first gripe that I really do have with Iori is actually the arts cards, because... Even though he has four hits a piece on both of those arts cards, he only has 0.42% NP gain, and he doesn't have a whole lot of, say, NP gain buffs to really help out with that. Now, he does have a battery, and he does stack his arts buff, and once you start stacking that arts buff, he can get some really good NP gain, but just know that before you fire the first or second NP, his refund is not terrible, but it's a little bit lackluster, but... Then again, if you have Koyanskaya, do you really care? You're probably just going to loop his battery and start dumping 50% batteries into him. So that's probably not going to be a problem. And in challenge quest, you're probably going to bring Merlin, who gives him, you know, NP every single turn. So it's probably not going to be a problem. But if you get to a point where it's you and Iori just has to use his arts cards to get back his NP, it might be a little rough sometimes from what I've noticed just in my initial usage of him. We do love that they gave him that six hit extra attack, though, as you got to say with me, the extra attack is the composite card that gen stars NP and does big boy damage. And so we like to see that there's actually a little bit of value in going for the append skill and maxing out that extra attack effectiveness. But memes aside, we can start getting into his skills because I think his skills are all really strong. I like what they did with all of his skills and his NP. It's just he's missing like one or two things that I think could have really made him definitively the best free to play servant. But that's kind of me just having wishful thinking because I really like Hiyori. I would like him to be the best free to play servant. But Maybe when he gets a buff in like a year or two, maybe when they bring him back for evocation or whatever else, they do a Samurai Remnant rerun and they give him a, a buff or something along those lines. I don't know. Maybe they'll give him all the gas then. But regardless, starting off with his first skill, this is basically going to be the crit skill. And I love how it's built. It gives him three turns of star weight, 30% crit damage for three turns, and he drops 10 stars every turn for three turns with a little bit of debuff resistance thrown in there, 50% for three turns combined with his magic resistance of 17.5%, I do believe the debuff resistance, even though it's mental debuff resistance, it should add into the magic resistance down there. So he's really gonna avoid getting sleeped, stunned, charmed, skill sealed, all those really annoying things that bosses can do to try to slow you down. It's just a nice thing they tacked on there. Obviously with debuff immunity be better, 100%. But I mean, it is just something they tacked onto this first skill, which is really just a crit skill. So I'll take it as a bonus effect that is kind of just thrown in there. And why I like the skill so much is that on a lot of crit servants or servants that are designed to also do crits in addition to doing really high NP damage, they always just seem to have one turn of really good star weight. 
but it's only one turn and then it's on like a six or five turn cooldown and sure you still have the crit damage but you're not absorbing the stars and so then it doesn't matter that you have all this crit damage because your casters or your reigns if you're using a rider support is stealing all of your stars from you or stealing most of them and it can get really annoying but so the fact that he keeps you know a moderate amount of star weight and then he has a solid crit damage buff it's not the 50 percent waiver crit damage buff but 30 percent crit damage can still go a long way especially again because you're probably going to bring merlin or your koyan sky is with him that are going to help his crit damage out regardless and then the stars every turn i do like especially when you use him with merlin and then god forbid you got 20 30 going as well on one of your merlins it's curtains you're just gonna have infinite stars for the rest of the battle so it's just nice that he's kind of helping out with the star pool providing a little bit of extra stars so that he can guarantee to kind of get those crits going to be a little bit of extra damage which he really doesn't need his np does enough damage we'll talk about that later but yeah first skill already very good second skill just gives him a smorgasbord of good effects a 30 percent battery that's very strong if you want to use this guy as your 90 plus plus farmer because for a lot of players this is going to be one of their strongest single target sabers, if not their strongest single target in general as a free to play that is a free NP5. Having a 30% battery can really help out a lot of players, especially because he does have scaling damage, like say Muramasa, where every single time he fires his NP, he gets stronger and stronger. He also gives himself a 20% attack buff, which is nice. So he kind of multiplies with those other different types of buffs that he's going to give himself. He bombs 20 stars, which again is also nice. You have the first skill that is really good sustain. It gives you the star weight for multiple turns. It gives you the stars over time. That's very strong. But then he also has the ability to start immediately doing crits by bombing 20 stars which i love and then the burn normally i would rag on the burn because you guys know i'm not a huge fan of damage over time but because we actually have ce's that are starting to give us power mods on having these damage over time buffs you know we have honey lake and we have and i don't remember the joxtamo lay one off the top of my head but that one is for curses the fact that we're starting to get more ce's like this is starting to make these damage over time buffs very nice now if you don't have honey lake that's a little unfortunate you know obviously starting jp right now you know you probably don't have it because that was available a long time ago but still it makes stuff like this better for whenever they do bring that back whenever you are able to get your grubby little mitts on that or if they make a gotcha ce that maybe it is the same thing as honey lake in the future but instead of starting you off with 50 percent battery maybe you get like np damage or a buster buff or crit damage i think it'd be very interesting if they started exploring these because it starts to make this stuff a lot better so i do even like the burn on this and then we go to his third skill and it's more good stuff he gets an omni card buff of 20 percent to each individual card type then he also gives himself two dodges for three turns and 500 less damage taken for three turns on a six turn cooldown did i mention that all of his skills are on that clean six turn cooldown so he's got low cooldowns and very powerful effects did i also mention that yui just came out with this guy and remember, Yui's NP gives you attack, NP damage buff, and crit damage if you have all three card types. And would you look at that? You always got all three card types. I wish I had my Yui. I'm not giving up yet, but kind of got booty blasted on the banner. But once I get my Yui, I am very excited to try this out, you know see what I'm able to do with the Eeyore Yui setup and see if it's really fun to play around with because this is just a very strong buff in general. Like I was saying earlier, his arts cards aren't the best, but giving himself the arts buff is very strong, not just for giving himself the extra damage, but for giving himself extra NP gain on those arts cards. And then the buster performance is going to be very good for his damage. And then I guess we'll just look at his NP. His NP, he gives himself an additional 20% quick and buster 20% buff for three turns that procs first, he pierces evasion and then bombs 10 stars. And this is where he starts to get really nuts because the first NP you look at his damage and you're like, all right, that's some pretty good damage. But then, you know, I went ahead and took the liberty of calcing what a second and third NP looks like for this guy. And he starts to get a little ridiculous. He becomes just basically the most free damage single target saber you've ever seen. He doesn't have any power mods, which I do not like. I think you do need power mods to kind of stay relevant for longer in FGO, just because that's kind of the way the game seems to be going, especially if Ushi goes and is anything to go by. It seems like they're really starting to push how much damage you can do with some of these power mods, especially if you can get something very strong like Earth or Man. Those seem to be very, very strong power mods to get. But I do think that Iori can kind of skirt around the issue of not having a power mod because his damage is just so free. 
And while he's not stacking the arts buff, which I really would like to see them do, I would figure they maybe didn't give him an arts buff because they think you're gonna use him with Yui and Yui gives you a 30% arts buff. So realistically between the both of them, he's got 50%, which should be fine for refunding. But his quick card could actually start refunding really well once you start getting a couple of stacks of that quick buff he could start doing some pretty decent regen over there and because he's got the quick and buster thing going on you can unironically just use him with caster and ruler scotty if you want to be really hilarious obviously it's probably still better to use him with merlin or koyan sky but if you want to be funny you know you could use him as like a pseudo quick servant it it's kind of funny it's <laughs> Funny to me at the very least, but yeah, one of the other things that I wish he had aside from the power mod, the double hits is kind of like a personal thing for me, but I do wish that he had the power mod of just something. I think it would just help him age a little bit later, but I think he can kind of skirt around that. It's the sure hit. I kind of wish they gave him Pierce Invul or maybe the duo effect of having sure hit plus Pierce defense. I think that is very strong to give the free to play servants. I don't really mind if gotcha guys don't have it because you know, they're gotcha servants. There's like a billion of them that you have to choose from between guys that have any combination of Pierce defense, Pierce invul, sure hit, Pierce defense, just whatever. They have everything. But when a free to play servant has Pierce invul, I think that is so valuable for newer players, especially because just getting a servant that you can always rely on that no matter what the boss throws your way, whether it's an annoying dodge gimmick or a very misplaced timed, you know, invincibility when you're about to win, just having that baked into your NP, kind of like Gray does, I think that's always very, very valuable. Not to say that Gray is better than Iori, I don't think that by a long shot, but I do think it's very helpful when they have that kind of stuff. I really like that it helps out newer players and even long time players, especially if you don't have say Masashi, who is kind of just like the five-star version of Yori, kind of. So I don't know, I just would have liked to see him have that, especially, and again, this is the lore head of me talking, but I'm like, well, Yori did beat Masashi in one of the routes and Masashi does have invul, so maybe give him that Pierce invul for the accuracy, but that's literally me just being like really stubborn. Then I'm like, well, I played the game and it doesn't make as much sense, beep, 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 beep. You know, that's just me being, a little whiny baby about it but realistically i think he passes with flying colors like i think this guy gets an a plus as a free-to-play unit i think he's exceptional i think he's very good but that's the reason i was saying that i don't know if i can crack him into top three best free-to-play units because it just feels like there's like one thing missing and i don't really like his refund on his arts cards it is a little rough at times and i think i notice it more because i don't actually have koyan's gaia so if i want to do things that involve me bursting down bosses, I'm not able to do that. And so I kind of have to play with him a little bit differently. So I might be noticing the issues in his NP gain a little bit more than you probably normally would. Because if you're going in with double Koyan Sky, I'm not only going to loop his battery back, but you have two thick mommies with 50% thickle batteries that are going to just keep your Eori pumped up. And so even if he only gets back up to 50%, I mean, on top of his Buster cards refunding 20% because of their Buster card buff that also gives him that, you're probably not going to notice it. But me, I notice it a little bit. <laughs> But let me know what you think in the comments down below. I really like Iori. I think he's very strong. But again, had a couple of gimmicks or gripes with him. But overall, I think he's very, very strong. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Late, guys.